This is the fifth estate winning headline, Your Media Police Post, brought to you by the Fort Hall School of Government coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. But we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 13th of July, 2020, and I am 2J. I'm Tom. And I am DM. Let's take a look at today's headlines on the Daily Nation. Waiting to explode. The standard. Uhuru gives in to Raila's demands. Mm. And in the star, Kenyatta shelves cabinet reshuffle. Yes. Let's begin with the explosion in the Daily Nation. Mm -hmm. So as of Sunday, Kenya has officially passed the 10,000th case mark um, yeah. with corona positive cases. And the Daily Nation is telling us that President Uhuru's June dilemma over the two competing rights is beginning to unfold. Yeah. I think I disagree with that for the moment. Mm -hmm. But they're saying that these numbers um, point to a possible health crisis. They also go on to say that um, as we've started to do more testing, we're beginning to see more cases coming out. Mm -hmm. But then also they make comparisons to other countries yeah. upon hitting mm -hmm. their own 10,000th case mark. Yeah. So they talk about the US, China, Italy and Spain. So they kind of say that Kenya has done um, everything in the opposite direction. We did the lockdown very early on and now as cases are increasing we're beginning to open whereas these countries um, began to lock down once they hit the higher cases. Mm. Um, I think that it's, it's normal to see that with more testing there's more cases. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Mm. But also I think it's wrong for them to um, give put place blame on the president. I think we're only going to see the effects of this reopening in the next two weeks or rather two weeks from the date that we reopened. Mm. So I think it's a bit um, early to say whether or not those two rights have in fact become one mm. wrong and one right mm. yes. so yeah actually well opening up the country was not predicated on the infection numbers decreasing yes it was predicated on the preparedness levels increasing and I think that is what um, I it was based on yeah. and as you said to JS we have the benefit of foresight in mm. this pandemic we have seen how it has um, happened or panned out in in other countries so we do know that the numbers are going to go up go up yeah. you, know, you know guys I, mm. uh, you know there's a story of um, the, the man, the donkey, and his son. Um, when, when the father uh, got off the donkey and uh, the donkey was riding by himself, the women in the market said, look at that foolish father. How does he let his, uh, his son, son, walk. Uh, son walk and, and he himself can be on the donkey? So he puts the son on the donkey and they continue walking. And then they meet other people in the market say what a foolish uh, son how can he be on the donkey letting his father walk and he, the father is the older one point is remember before we opened up the mm. media was telling country oh kenya is suffering an economic crisis yeah president Uhuru kenya said, please open up now he's opened up saying oh no, you have made a mistake. They, Close going, again. The uh, point is, he <laughs> has very tough choices. Mm. Yeah. He's the president of a republic with 47 million people. These people, uh, you know, they they depend on, a, on uh, some, t some of them depend on a meal a day. Yeah. He did not have much choice but to open up. I yeah. think it's, yeah. it's That is why being the him. president is the highest ranking job in the land. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to make decisions tough that choices. other people do not have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have a three-part criteria that we use to analyze the headlines for you. We ask, is it top or speculative? Is it repetitive or groundbreaking? And finally, is the headline thoughtful or is it just plain lazy? I had yes. liked this headline on first sight, mm -hmm. yeah. but my liking for it has <laughs> this has drastically <laughs> deteriorated. <laughs> All right. Um, because it's it's very it's alarmist yeah. and yeah. it's 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 alarmist in a very strong way. We're talking about a country, we're talking about people, mm. and they're talking about an explosion. Mm. Absolutely. In the standard, we mm. are political. Yes, Uhuru gives in to Raila's demands. Now, the standard is telling us that President Uhuru Kenyatta uh, today, I mean yesterday, finally gave in to demands by ODM to weak out Ruto's allies from committees deemed to be crucial in the passage of BBI. Yeah. And then they go to ahead and said that um, that um, he specifically reportedly took issue with Kikuyu MP Kemani Ishungwa uh, being proposed to the Finance and Planning Committee. Mm. And apparently they say sources spoke of an area to who were questioning why Kemunya had retained some of the DeWipped Tanga Tanga MPs in powerful committees. Mm. Well, I don't think this was a giving in per se. I, I just think yeah. th it's, a, it's a push and pull of negotiation. Sometimes yeah. even when you have a partner, you don't give in too easily uh, to, to, the, to their demands. Sometimes let them sweat and you, of course, you already know what the end will be. Mm. But you know, we, we always say this time and time again that the um, media is either 
lazy or evil. evil. Yeah. And I think that in this situation, yeah. they have framed a headline that mm. purposefully makes the president look weak. Mm. And I think that, too, I'm just as you're saying, this yeah. is about negotiation. Yeah. If BBI is supposed to be talking about inclusivity and bringing in, you know, communities together, yeah. Yeah. the negotiation is part of that. So I don't mm. see it as a giving in to anybody's demands. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I think um. it's a very badly framed headline. Absolutely. Yeah. And the uh, body yeah. and ODM are yeah. well within their rights to, to demand. demand for uh, those positions. I mean, the Precisely. reason why you are a party is to spearhead a certain agenda. That is mm. true. Then also you do it strategically by placing yourself in leadership or by placing placing yourself at the head of uh, committees. So that is true. they that is true. did what they are supposed to do, do. <laughs> and uh, got the result that they, that they wanted. Wouldn't that be a boring headline though? Politicians do job. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> Politicians do what they are supposed, supposed to, to do. It's like postman delivered. <laughs> you buy that. It's like postman delivered. Yeah, it would not. It would be. It would be tactical. It would not be repetitive. It yes. would not be speculative. <laughs> it would be thoughtful. So maybe it would win. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really? In the star, mm. they are telling us that uh, the president Kenyatta has shelved um, imminent uh, cabinet reshuffle. Mm. So there had been an anticipated change, yeah. uh, cabinet change, but uh, some things have happened. There's some speculative things that the star is saying are the reason why the president is not going to do a cabinet reshuffle. And the first mm. one yeah. is the absence of Raila uh, <laughs> when he left the country for treatment. So that stalled um, negotiation. Yes. The second thing is that uh, now uh, CS Amina Mohammed, who is mm. being fronted for the director general position for the World Trade Organization, mm -hmm. yeah. they're, you, they're waiting it out so that if she does get the post, then a cabinet reshuffle yeah. becomes very, uh, it follows naturally. Mm. Yes. So it, it would be less of a headache. Yeah. Yeah. But the president did say in the meeting that he had, I think it was last week with the yeah. CSS the, and PSS. Yeah. He said, when I had you, I never announced it in the media. I will not announce in the media when I want you out. So yes. ignore what is, is being said. Yeah. Anyway, so this, the star has said that uh, you have to wait if you're expecting a cabinet shuffle. Mm. I, if, if the star seems to know a lot of <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Ministerial lollipop. So yes. what is our winning headline? You know, I, I wanted to agree with you. I was going with the star, but I mean with, with the, the nation. nation. But now I want to come yeah, we don't want to see our country exploding. Yes, I you know it's one of those Mondays. Yeah, actually, let's, let's say no. Let's do no. We do a headline. losing headline. L losing headline, up a fantastic. Then the Daily Nation wins the losing headline. <laughs> Very good. And onto the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country, just mm -hmm. like the headlines, we have a three-part criteria that we use to analyze them for you. We ask, is the cartoon humorous or dry? Is it satirical or pessimistic? And finally, is it effective or is the cartoon just plain lazy? We begin with the Daily Nation where there's a dustbin written containment yeah. and there's coronaviruses flying out. Mm. And the reason is that uh, public ignorance has flipped <laughs> the lid and let out the virus yet uh the per there's a person walking away there in yeah, PPE, ppe and yeah. it looks like she had or he had already done the containment mm. put it in the dustbin and done uh, <laughs> done their job yeah so i guess this is a commentary on what is happening now that uh the country has been as we say opened up yeah and there's a lot of uh people out there who are just not being careful i saw videos mm. of churches yes. uh, from yesterday where people are they don't have any protective gear on don't have masks mm. uh, there's children in the in the videos and yes. of course they're in very close quarters and the comment there on the on the picture was that that service did was definitely definitely went beyond an hour mm -hmm. oh, yeah wow. so no, i do i do believe public ignorance is to blame the president said we're all in this together right mm. yes so i think we all need to take responsibility for how we behave yeah and also we cannot be policed in our households or in ev in our places of worship mm, yeah absolutely so that's a sad situation oh, there. But sorry can we toss that oh yeah <laughs> very far, <laughs> very far. <Let's> be honest <laughs> <laughs> in the standard we have a statue of president Trump of the United States and he is naked. I think Gado took the last picture he had done of Uhuru Kenyatta mm. and put Trump's head on it. Yeah. <laughs> and down there is the is now Trump uh, having a look at the statue and he's surrounded by his advisors. And one of them is saying to him, no museum, no library, not even any um, country. <laughs> Want to, to keep it. Want to and keep the staff that he's holding at the top of it is a blue Twitter Twitter bird, bird uh, yeah. which I suppose has become the emblem of his leadership. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I think this cartoon is coming off on the uh, heels of Trump issuing an executive order to protect 
monuments after protesters in America yeah. uh, either want to deface or to remove monuments uh, of racism, or monuments mm. of people who stood for, for racism. And, and, and another one was also that uh, a wooden sculpture of American First Lady Melania Trump was uh, burnt down in her hometown of Slovenia. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, that was, <laughs> hmm. yeah, so they're saying oh. no one is going to take uh, his statue and you know, I think Gadu is right. You mm. know what I love about Gado is how he draws Muzungus in his cartoons. Yeah. Mm. They look so bland and boring, like with no <laughs> flavor, no spice. I think it's <laughs> it's fantastic. I mean, you see how we are drawn across, you know, the pond. Yeah. I think it's apt for him to do the same for them. I like yeah. the way you said, no flavor, no spice. <laughs> no flavor, no spice. Uh, the star. The star is yes. my favorite cartoon. You have caricature of Francis Atodi, uh, Musala Mudavadi, and Moses Wetangula tied up in a circuit. And uh, that circuit, and, and <laughs> it's a circuit with bulbs, mm -hmm. and it's uh, plugged into a power source. And uh, the caption there, there, there's Luya Unity, the bulbs are uh, spell labeled, out, in, yeah. uh, spell out Luya Unity. And mm -hmm. you can see uh, um, this guy, Atuli, with, mm. the, with the three letters of the Luyas on his back. <laughs> and the caption there is entanglement. Now, yeah. and look at Mudavadi's legs. <laughs> 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 but Kevin, for all of our yes. parents at home, please. Yeah. Would you like? Would you care to explain oh, why entanglement reference? Entanglement is a trending word. Absolutely. Now, people, let me explain it this way. Tuesday morning, I woke up to a very unusual scenario. There was a, there's an actress called Jada Pinkett Smith. Is that correct? Yes. And she was discussing some matter with her husband mm -hmm. or partner, or that's what, that's what they call it, and his name is Will Smith. Mm -hmm. And uh, she came up with her, she was asked why she did something, and she, she said we were in an entanglement. Yes. That uh, description is so vague. It's so vague. Parents <laughs> just Google. <laughs> en 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 entanglement. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. It, so it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a new buzzword. It's yes. a new buzzword. So Ozone has used it to show how the Luya leadership is so entangled that mm -hmm. they cannot come up with Luya with Luya unity. I think that's what the bulbs are supposed to, to, to spell. spell out, yes. Yeah, but this is a Kenyan political factor of life. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that the, trouble of the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and there will be no, no Luya unity. But anyway, <laughs> it's, uh, maybe that's it's okay. We should move too. away from tribal unity and go into unity around other things, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. between those two? Entanglement. I think the star takes it. Entanglement yeah. wins. Ozone of the star <laughs> gives us our winning card too. So before our final thought, we'd like to remind our viewers to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So what is our final thought? And now our final thought, it is inspired by a book entitled Awakening Africa's Sleeping Giant mm. by Charles Nova. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so this week the theme is Africa through African eyes. We want to take a look at some of the things that are going on in the continent, but yeah. told through the lens of Africans themselves. Mm. So this week deals with some of the paradoxes about Africa. We have poverty in the midst of abundant natural wealth. Mm. We have stagnant standards of living, despite billions of dollars in development finance or foreign aid that has been pumped into the continent for the past 50 years. Mm. We have this contradiction between borrowing Western development patterns, yeah. um, but the real aspirations and the needs of Africans being put to the side. And we also have w um, this contradiction of why neither Western democracy or mm. Eastern socialism works well in Africa. Mm. What are we going to do? Yeah. Mm. So this specific book today, Awakening Africa's Sleeping Giant, explores the feasibility of restoring international competitiveness mm. yeah. and growth in African agriculture mm. through the identification of products and production systems yeah. that can help with um, rapid development in com competitive agriculture. Right. So in this book, they argue that there is this huge area defined as the Guinea savanna. Mm. This is an area that stretches across Western Africa and has a second belt in Southern Africa. Yeah. And there'll be an image up on the screen for you to see what that looks like. Yeah. And this area, they say, offers huge potential for a new era of commercial agriculture in Africa. Mm. Enough to supply both domestic, regional, and global markets. Mm. So the book looks at some factors that contributed to the success in Brazil and Thailand, yeah. as well as case studies in successful countries in Africa, specifically Mozambique, Nigeria, and Zambia. Yeah. So they argue that there are these huge opportunities for farmers in Africa to regain international competitiveness. Yeah. And they say, especially when you consider the long-term strength of agricultural commodities in the world, because mm. we know this, we're gonna need to eat and we'll always need mm -hmm. to eat. Yeah. 
And so this book tries to provide optimism for agriculture to become a major staple for inclusive growth on the continent. Yeah. And so the book looks at two components. It yeah. looks at backward looking components uh -huh. where they seek to learn lessons from the past yeah. yes. and components that are forward looking where we can then apply those lessons in the context of this constantly changing economic um, structure we live in. Yeah. So the backward looking um, components include yeah. the case studies I mentioned from Thailand and Brazil as mm -hmm. success stories. Yes. But then they also review the success stories of local and regional examples. Yeah. So they say, for example, that the Cerrado region in Brazil and the northeast region of Thailand mm. shared a lot of um, commonalities. And they say that a lot of these countries were seen to be economically backward and they had limited infrastructure and poor um, potential. Yeah. But then they say at the end of the book that arguably the most important lesson of all relates to the role of the state. And yeah. we keep saying that time and time again. Yeah. In Brazil and Thailand, the governments played a vital role in establishing a conducive enabling environment. Yes. And then thereafter, the private sector is able to then pick up where they left off, bringing in innovation, but then also a lot of private investment yep. that is not always available locally. Right. Mm. So I think this book really does show us how we have the sleeping giant that we just need to tap into, mm. and as quickly as possible. Fantastic. And you know, when I read this book, I came up with two, uh, with a thesis for myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, there's a reason why I am for comparative advantage with regard to production in African countries. Yeah. You, pr you produce that which you can do at a, at a rate nobody else can do it. Mm -hmm. And let me explain why. There are two mm -hmm. examples, two mm -hmm. countries, Brazil and Thailand, perfect examples. Both countries picked commodities that were traded internationally in large quantities yeah. and, and, and which they did not need much uh, international uh, uh, quality standards <laughs> to really to, uh, adhere to. Mm -hmm. Now, in Brazil, it was soya beans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in 1961, they were producing 250,000 metric tons by the year 2000. All right? Uh, that, that No, sorry. They were producing 250,000. 50,000 metric tons by 1961. Mm -hmm. yeah. By the year 2000, they were producing over 30 million metric tons. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Thailand, it was cassava. Mm -hmm. uh, in the year 1961, uh, they were producing 1.7 billion metric tons. Mm -hmm. By the year 1996, uh, they, had, uh, they were doing 20.7 million metric tons. Mm -hmm. Both countries spanned 41, uh, 41, 41 years. years yeah. What's the secret? He says the secret is that they concentrated on markets where they had preferential trade access. Mm -hmm. In other words, they had de facto trade access. They could mm -hmm. enter those countries and, uh, and, and market their produce mm -hmm. like you cannot believe. Okay. So when I, sa I sat down and then I asked myself, why is Africa so, then why is the question, why is Africa not competitive despite yeah. having a fantastic agricultural environment? Mm -hmm. Now he gives a good example and he says, Mozambican farmers who are highly competitive in producing cassava in the domestic market would have to cut domestic production and logistics by more than 80 percent to become competitive exporters of cassava to europe wow. and they said aha that's what our problem is mm -hmm. you know when you check the figures yeah. uh, africa trades with itself 14 percent of the no uh, of all the trade africa does with the world 14% it does uh, within itself. Mm. And that's exactly what the problem mm. is. We have uh, focused on international markets than on regional markets. Mm. And the reason he says this is because in the case of Brazil and Thailand, they invested in the following, in uh, infrastructure, in better transport linkages, in better processing and better storage. Basically, they invested in supply chain. Yes, they knew they had the uh, comparative advantage of doing soya beans or doing cassava. But without the supply chain advantage, with you, without you having airports here, without you having ports and uh, what, railways and, uh, mm. you know, uh, what do you call mm. it, um, uh, warehousing, yeah. then you, you're, you're going to do nothing. Now, I think our focus really should be, and uh, it's good we've done this uh, continental free Africa and trade uh, area thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. We should focus more on regional trade because if we don't focus on that, with that within or that which is within our borders, and we focus on international markets, should anything happen within mm. with the, within those international markets, the first person to suffer will be us. And hasn't Corona proven and that to be true? Absolutely, it really has. Mm. Absolutely. To him, I agree wholeheartedly with everything you have said, except one thing. <laughs> I think that telling um, countries to stick to their comparative advantage is mm. the equivalent of telling people to stick to their lane and know their position in life. Mm. And if that was applied on a country level, M-Pesa would not be from Kenya but from Silicon Valley in California. Mm. 
Toyotas would only be from Germany. Mm. So countries would not realize their potential because mm. they are told yeah. um, you can't do this. You don't have the resources, you don't have the, even, even more patronizingly, mm. you don't have the mental capacity you, you or, know, the, you know, or the ability. You know, DM, I agree to an extent, and you know why? He says that. You agree with her, disagree y with y you. Yes, <laughs> I, yeah, I, 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 disag I agree and disagree. Yeah. And, he, and the, he says that when you um the first stage of competitiveness mm. should be you uh, using that which you are able to do as at that time, as at that time. but as and you progress yeah then you, you can do better. that mm. which you, you were can not able you to can do widen your scope good. yeah absolutely. I, yeah i don't think it should be applied in a in a yes. blanket way yeah, absolutely absolutely also comparative advantage should be looked at within reason yes. because it would also be outside of reason for us as kenya to say you know what now we're going to be the pioneers in space travel yeah which it is absolutely yeah. fantastic yes but I we think. should not limit ourselves. Yes, that is true. In this book, I <laughs> two things uh, caught my eye, and they're very simple but very important. The first one yeah. is the power of value addition for mm. Africans, for, yeah. for Africans to be able to be globally competitive in the in agriculture. Yeah. Now, African farmers have for for decades been engaged in cash crop farming, mm. coffee, tea, cotton, and, and cocoa. Yeah. But there are also those uh, crops that are seen as subsistence. Mm. Yeah. But with just a drop of value addition, mm. their price yeah. and their revenue can be triple or trebled. Yeah. For instance, um, fruit. Mm. Uh, we grow a lot of fruit in many parts of the country. Yeah. Dehydration of fruit mm. or pulverizing fruit trebles the, yeah. the, the, value. the yeah. value or yeah. its value. Juicing, pickling, the list is endless. Now we're running out of time. Mm. Uh, and the other thing also that value addition does, mm. it, the, it drastically reduces um, what they call yeah. post-harvest losses yeah. or, mm. or, or farm wastage. Yeah. Yeah. But all these things are easier said than done Absolutely. if it is not done with the support of the state as Tujay has said. I think yeah. it is now a yeah. universal, universally mm -hmm. uh, known and accepted thing that uh, governments, one of the people that governments protect foremost Absolutely. are the farmers. Uh, are the, are the farmers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the other thing that this uh, book has also shown mm. or has demonstrated mm. is that like any other industry, yeah. agriculture also um, is heavily dependent on innovation and ideas. And I think for a long time, agriculture has been seen to be a very rudimentary um, industry that is largely mm. hardware. It's about uh, tractors and mm. other farm implements. But now mm. more than ever, yeah. it's ideas and uh, innovation that propel the very mm. simple things that you produce Absolutely. into to uh, making you as an individual or as a country competitive on the global on the global um, scale. Yeah. Yeah. So as you think about which farming venture to <laughs> pick up, I will leave you with a quote. Yeah. No race or no human race can prosper until it learns that there is as much dignity in tilling a field as there is in writing a poem. Mm. So please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also on your TV screens on Pam Free to Air, Star Times, and Go TV. Have a good night and see you tomorrow.